do a bit of a recap on this past weekend's game. It was a great atmosphere here in Tiger Stadium, so I'd like to take a moment just to uh, to look back on the performance. I thought it was a complete game for our football team. Certainly there are things that you can do better. We want to communicate a little bit better. We had some false start penalties and some communication errors, but uh, by and large, looking at the positives, got off to a great start. Um, a couple of three and outs, I think, set the momentum for the game offensively. You know, um, you want to turn every possession into a touchdown, but, um, you know, getting up 17 uh, nothing, and, th and then playing, you know, consistently on both sides of the ball. I thought we were physical. Uh, I thought our presence in terms of um, just the overall perimeter play, tackling on the perimeter was much better. And, and playing the ball in the air. So the little things that we're looking for progress, we're starting to see that. Um, and then, you know, the quarterback is, is, is playing at such an elite level. Um, you know, he threw an interception, so he is human. Um, you know, he was expecting another route to be run in that situation, and it didn't happen. They were actually, um, we had somebody walking on the play. So again, you know, Jaden Daniels has been amazing in terms of what he's doing. I think everybody knows that, uh, you know, leads the nation in total offense, passing efficiency. Um, you know, I think the offense in itself and what they're doing, six consecutive games of over 500 yards. So, you know, it's it's fun to watch an offense like that. It's I hope for our fans, uh, they're taking it in. I know um, 2019 is still, um, you know, a, a trendsetter because it led to a national championship, and rightfully so. I mean, those were great players, but um, – you should not take this for granted. This is uh, pretty remarkable stuff. Um, so uh, really fun to see this offense play and the efficiency in terms of what it's doing, um, in terms of running the football, uh, throwing the football, um, effectiveness, and then you know getting better, certainly uh, defensively. As we turn the page, um, we're excited about hosting Army, certainly. Um, you know, anytime you play a service academy, the respect that we have for uh, the academies and certainly our gr the great leaders that are playing uh, collegiate football, uh, to have them and host them here at Tiger Stadium is, uh, is, is, is a thrill. Uh, and we want to be able to honor that, uh, but we also want to beat them. Uh, they're a good football team. Uh, they're well coached. Um, Jeff Monken is a heck of a football coach, comes from a great family of coaches. I know him well. I respect him as a football coach. His team will be well prepared. Um, and, and much like um, how they represent the service academy, they re represent that as a football team. They keep coming at you. Four quarters of football. They're going to play physical. They're rough. They're physical. Ru the ruggedness, uh, ruggedness shows out in the way they play. Um, you know, it, it, look, the, the, i got to tell our football team, you know, they, they had two games where they're right in it at the end. Uh, against BC, they score a touchdown to go up 27-24, get a call back with about six minutes to go in the game. Um, and, and then the BC game, uh, you know, obviously, as ev everyone knows, Florida State, uh, BC, BC's got a chance to win that game with the ball. Um, and, and we know what Florida State did against us. So it's a good, tough football team, uh, plays hard. Bryson Daly, their quarterback, everything runs through him. Um, you know, just for the fans that, that uh, expect a uh, triple option, it's, a, it's not a triple option team. They do run principles of triple option, but uh, it's run a little bit different. I think you'll see some of the principles you saw even this weekend run a little bit differently, but, but you'll see some of the, you know, the quarterback runs uh, that, that Alford had uh, in, in the game plan against Auburn. Uh, but again, um, uh, a very physical defense, long. I mean, you know, you talk about uh, a defense that's long. Um, you know, their defensive linemen, 6'4", 6'5", uh, great length. And, um, you know, again, we'll have to be focused on um, our improvement and playing a really good physical football team and can't be distracted by anything else um, because it's going to require that kind of effort. Um, injury updates. Um, We've got two guys that are that are doubtful for this weekend. That's Emory Jones and um, Makai Wingo. They'll be listed as doubtful. We'll see how they progress during the week. Um, and then uh, Chris Hinton is a probable uh, for this weekend. So those were the the primary guys on 
the injury report for us. So with that, uh, we'll open it up to questions. Uh, if you could just give us a location on Makai's injury. And then the job that uh, Lance did in, the, in uh, Emory's place, I guess, and along just the entire offensive line, what have you seen out of them through half the season so far? Well, first of all, when, when you have a true freshman that you can plug and play in an SEC game and, and not have to worry about, you know, fanning to that side, chipping, leaving a tight end, and that's, that's a, I, I believe that's a luxury uh, from my perspective. He went in, played 69 snaps, and, um, you know, had a couple of, you know, uh, false start penalties, had a holding penalty, but, the, you know, those are things that you're going to live with with a with a young guy that's uh, going in there. But his poise, his um, his ability to work with the five guys, the communication, um, really pleased with his play. Uh, Makai Wingo uh, has been has been nursing kind of a lower body injury all year. This gives us a chance to really get him right um, going into the bye week and then the rest of the season. How would you view or describe, I would uh, say, Mike Denbrock's role and how great the offense has been this year and then the groove that he's kind of gotten into uh, with this team over the past month? Well, he's central to it because it's, uh, you know, certainly coordinating it, you know, requires the, you know, the input. Um, and, look, I, I, I'm a big believer that, you know, you don't really get a buy-in unless you get everybody to weigh in. So... You know, he's getting input from, from the entire offensive staff and, and then, you know, putting it together. You know, it's never a one-man show. It's, it's a collaborative, um, you know, and, and I think cohesive event when a coordinator is doing his job. If, if he's coming in early and scripting everything by himself and leaving everybody else to, to kind of wonder what's going on, usually have a group that, that has good days and bad days. This group is consistent, and it's because they all work together and everybody has a role. And... Credit to Mike's leadership and his ability to um, bring everybody in uh, to the process. Um, and then, you know, his play calling. Um, you know, he matches uh, play calls to players, uh, gets the ball to uh, the playmakers. And, and that's what this is about. This is not about, you know, plays. This is about players. And I think he's hit both of those uh, out of the park. Um, hey, Coach, just a, a two-parter here. Do you, do you know the severity of, of Emory's ankle injury? Do you think it's going to be a long-term deal? And then second, you guys are 7-23 of last two weeks on third down uh, defensively. Just what, what has gone into the, uh, the improvement there of getting off the field? Um, yeah, we think it's, a, it's an injury that um, can be managed quite well and, and that we'll have him back. Um, again, you know, as, as we look at this, um, you know, from an injury standpoint, we're always going to um, be deliberate and making sure these guys are 100% moving forward as we get into the year. Um, but both of them are guys that we feel comfortable they're going to be back at, at full strength. Look, the, going into the Missouri game, we had given up, uh, I think, out of, you know, I think we had tracked like 15 drives and I think 13 out of 15 we'd given up points. Um, Past 15 drives, I think we've given up five out of 15. So something in that effect. So we're just playing more consistent defense. And, and, and it's not just one. It's 11 guys knowing their roles. And, I, and I've talked about this a couple of times, and I'll say it again. When the structure of the defense is in place and, and everybody knows their role within the defense, you, you start to get complementary defense. Guys knowing their roles allows 11 guys to play together. And – you know, we didn't do a great job of that early on. And, and, and part of that was, you know, trying to find roles for guys, um, not knowing clearly what the best lineup was. And, you know, now establishing what that looks like uh, has allowed us to build that kind of consistency on defense. Hey, Coach, I was curious, uh, John Emery's success against Auburn last year, did that play any factor into getting him more involved in the game plan this year? And when you miss the first two games, does it just take a while to get back into football playing shape? Yeah, it did. And, and look, I, I think, you know, the, the running back room needs to be commended. I mean, you know, e each one of those guys, if you look at Emery and, and Williams in particular, they didn't play a lot of snaps last week. And then this week they come in and, and play huge roles, you know. Um, 
you know, Williams gets a couple of touchdowns. You know, Emery gets a couple of big plays in the game. Uh, you know, Kane goes in and gets a big first down for us. Um, you know, that's, that's selflessness. I mean, and that's a, there's a lot of guys looking to play, and they're all sitting together on the bench asking each other, you know, what did you see out there? They're totally engaged, totally locked in. That's a pretty good situation. Um, and so, you know, Coach Wilson's got his hands full there, right? I mean, he's got a lot of guys that can play and play at a high level, and he's got to find roles for them, and they've accepted those roles. And each one of them um, has, has when, when we've asked them to step up, they've stepped up big for us. Coach, people around here tend to fixate on certain opponents. Does that concern you this week as to where this game falls on the schedule, and, and, and do you have to coach against that? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it'll be important for our guys to think about what's important right now. And, and it, the bye week's not important right now. We don't go to the bye week this week. This week we need to focus on our development, and we need to focus on our process, and we need to focus on Army. If we focus on anything else, we'll get beat. We're, this football team is not a team that can play with the dimmer. You know, we're either on or off. <laughs> and so we need to be on. And, and, and so if we're locked in and doing our thing the right way, we're going to have a good Saturday. If we're not, we're going to struggle. And, and so we'll talk about that today when we meet. Uh, we've got to be locked in on our process and how we prepare this week against a really tough opponent. In the middle. From your experience, how do you handle players that are in Heisman consideration? And do you think it is appropriate to lobby <laughs> for, for a player uh, for the Heisman? You know, to me, the, the Heisman has become such a promotional piece and, and the flavor of the week um, that what I try to tell our guys that I've had involved in the Heisman is, look, you're not going to have control over this other than being consistent at what you do. You know, so every day your focus isn't about what they think about the Heisman because they're going to have opinions that range from one side to the other. Your focus is consistency and performance. If your performance is consistent week in and week out, then, then it's going to take care of itself. Um, other than that, they're going to say, well, you know, uh, you know, you're not playing well uh, enough on defense, which has nothing to do with the Heisman. Uh, if that was the case, they should have, you know, not given the Heisman to, to Caleb last year. They lost to Tulane, but they gave him the Heisman. So the fact of the matter is it's about your consistency and performance. And the rest of the narratives, they're going to float from A to Z, and, and you, can't, you can't focus on those. Ryan, with the disconcerting signals call, because that just keeps happening, do you have to – not to try to get you in trouble, but do you have don't, to? Don't don't well, you, you pick out these things just to get me in trouble? No, no, no. Do you have to? Co do you have to do something differently in terms? We're going to bring an air horn out back. there, I guess. <laughs> I, look, I've had a long conversation with with John McDade about this. I, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, we had a safety that was clapping to our corner to get his attention, and we got it called. Um, I said, look. Um, we're, we'll come up with another way of trying to communicate. Um, if you're in the front seven, my opinion is if you're in the front seven uh, and you're clapping, that's disconcerting. You know, you're in the core of the defense, you're in the front. To me, you're trying to simulate a snap. But if you're 12 yards deep trying to communicate with a corner, I just don't get it. Um, but we're going to have to come up with another way of communicating. Um, we actually had a meeting on it today. Uh, it's loud at, even at home. I mean, it's, it's just generally loud at home. So we're actually going to take some safeguards to communicate because we, we did have a, you know, a false start because we couldn't hear our ready call. We, you know, we're in verbal cadence on offense because we don't expect to go nonverbal at home, but we actually couldn't hear um, down by the end zone. So that's on us. We have to communicate, and we, we met on it this morning, and we'll have a communication system that works and covers all the rules. When, uh, when you spoke Saturday and even today, you said something to the idea of not taking this offense for granted. Do you ever have to guard or edit yourself for maybe trying to do too much when you get an offense like this? 
Um, no, I think I think Mike does a really good job of staying within you know the the confines of what we do and how we do it. And I think going back to the you know earlier question um, from Che, I think it's clear that what they've done as as a, as a group is is stay in those lanes. You know, we do what we do. Um, you know, the the touchdown to Malik, uh, we've run that play probably 37 times. I think we self-scouted that play 37 times, you know, which is, you know, kind of crazy. The motion that he came across where we call the legal procedure, he's been off the line 37 times. Um, but anyway, that's another story. It, it, it's, it's a fact that this group has been consistent in what they're doing, and they're not, like, drawing stuff up, right? And now they're matching what – there has been some changes in terms of over the last couple of weeks what defenses are doing. We're getting a lot more, you know, quarters. We're getting a lot more, you know, trapping two defenses. And, you know, Jaden's been pressed to go through some progressions, and he's, he's been outstanding. So um, I think what's happened more is that um, our staff's done a really good job of preparing for the eventualities of how teams are going to prepare, and you have to be on your toes and, and make sure that you go through your progressions because you're going to see some different things. Ryan, uh, the, I know you're talking about focusing this week, but, but you're trying to win your 300th career on the field game uh, this week. Uh, do you reflect at all on the journey uh, at all? Do you, do you, does it make you think at all back to your, you know, when you started as a coach at Grand Valley? I mean, just – your, your thoughts on getting to this uh, getting to this point in your career? Yeah, I mean, I don't really think about it that much. I didn't. This is the first time I heard it was it, that that's that's the case. To be quite honest with you, um, yeah, I think when you love what you do, you, you're not counting wins. You, you know, you're thinking about all right, what do we need to do from a player development standpoint? What do we need to do to get better in this area? Um, you know, you're not really counting. I, listen, if I was thinking about wins, I would have got out of this business a long time ago. Um, but having said that, I think g going back and looking at, you know, the journey, I had no idea I'd be in it this long. Because my first game, I remember the president at Grand Valley State opening up the press box window, and I could hear him because there was probably 300 people there, and said, who the hell hired this guy? <laughs> so I, I didn't think I was going to be in this business very long. And that was the first game. So, there you go. That's my perspective. Coach in the back, um, you mentioned this a little earlier. It's loud at home. Teams like Grambling, teams like Army, they may not be used to an atmosphere like Tiger Stadium. Is there any advantage to that um, for your team or no advantage at all? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, I, I don't know that, um, you know, when we talk about the nation's best leaders that are going to go defend our country that – they're worried about a little bit of crowd noise. Um, I think they're probably going to enjoy it. Actually, Saturday is their best day. Uh, Monday through Friday is really hard. Saturday is kind of a day off for these guys. Um, you know, they train hard. They work hard. They go to class. Um, these, these are days they enjoy. But our atmosphere does make a difference. I mean, it, it, it creates a home field advantage that, uh, that is special. I mean, it, it definitely – you know, uh, makes it difficult. Uh, we saw Auburn struggle with, with some play calls and certainly puts the pressure on teams when you come into Tiger Stadium. Uh, hey, Coach, just right here. Uh, Shelby Lee is yeah. a uh, walk-on. Sure team. is. He actually was in the Army. Like, is, That's like, correct. What kind of role is he going to play? And just Yeah, we're kind of team. formulating that right now. We're going to do some special things. As you know, the governor is a, a West Point grad. He'll be a part of what's going on. Uh, we're going to do some, some neat things in pregame. Um, you know, we're going to spring a couple of things that we think are representative of what that day should look like playing Army. Um, and, and we think Shelby's going to be part of that as well. And what kind of role does he just play on your team? Oh, he's an outstanding walk-on. I mean, he's uh, well-liked by the team. He works his tail off. Um, you know, he brings all the traits that you would expect a guy that is mature and, um, you know, represents his country. So, um yeah, we enjoy having them with us. When we talk about the defense, you've used the phrase learning to do your job, I think. Or, yeah. Or do, it, I read that as doing your job. Is it, le, is it legitimately learning 
and understanding what their roles are and that's kind of what has taken time? Or is it more just the focus on staying in your lane kind of thing? Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's a good question. Uh, um, and, and maybe sometimes how I respond um, and, and answering it would, would maybe be better clarified by saying that um, our players are clearly understanding now how important it is for them to do their singular job. Um, and, and when they function in that regard and, and that single-minded focus of if I just do my job, how this all works together. They're starting to see when I do my job, the linebacker can get to where he needs to, and then the safety can fit the right way, and then the corner can push crack. So I, I just think that they're seeing how this all fits together. Um, not that they didn't want to do their job, but sometimes they want to do somebody else's job too. Uh, Coach, curious, was there any update on Deuce Chestnut? Um, there's not. I can't give you one right now. Uh, we're still processing through that right now, but um, – Trust me, I, I will. I know you guys are interested in that that story. So once I get you some information, once I get some firm information, I'll get back to you. Good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.